everybody. By the time you're watching this video, I will be spending 8 hours in normal Black Rose prison today, and tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that, and the day after that, after that, after that, I think. So for the next 13 days, I will be grinding at least 925,562,755 XP, at least. Now, if we go to with a uh, 8 million XP an hour in normal Black Rose Prison, we'll probably need a total of 115 hours to go from roughly 2800 CP, which I'm not at, to 3600 CP. The event lasts 13 days, so that's about 8.89 hours a day. If somehow I can do 10 million XP an hour, it's only about 92 and a half hours, or 7.1 hours a day. Why am I doing this? To get to 3600 CP. How am I doing this? Well, this is going to be a rather unusual video. It's going to be a build video. Now, uh, in terms of the build, it's pretty straightforward. Nowadays, most people are going uh, Heartland Conqueror on at least as one of their 5P uh, sets. The reason being is that the Heartland Conqueror increases the effectiveness of your weapon traits by 100%. And you can have training weapons. Uh, the other 5P set is kind of debatable, depending on what you're doing or how you're grinding. Uh, for me, I opted to go with the old False God setup rather than something like Plague Break because I imagine I am going to need the sustain as I am on a Dragon Knight. Personally, I prefer using a Dragon Knight or a Temp or a Knight Blade rather for grinding XP. The reason being is, especially in Black Rose Prison or even in Skyreach, damage uh, from either of these classes can heal them. Now you can say Templar, but I don't really like the Templar's channeled ability of sweeps healing them because that can get interrupted depending on the content or depending on what you're doing. Uh, this build this, this build is primarily meant for normal Black Rose Prison. You can use it for Skyreach, you can use it for public dungeon grinding, you can use it for whatever XP grinding you're doing. But I'm going to go over how I'm going to get 409% more XP with this build. So, Heartland Conqueror is going to be uh, active on both bars. Probably because I don't want to risk losing out on the double training XP for my back bar. Uh, I am a high elf. I would highly recommend high elf if you are going to min-max XP gain, like long-term. If you're just going to grind for, you know, one event or two, I would not recommend, you know, wasting your tokens, or rather, sorry, sorry, crowns on a race change, or even gold on a race change token, unless you really want to. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Nephis, why are you, what, like, does 1% XP gain really affect that much? Surprisingly, yes, over the long term. If you take 1%, you know, 1 of the total XP you need from CP 160 to 3600 CP, or even 2800 CP to uh, 3600 CP, it's actually going to save you uh, a few, at least a few million XP. Um, at least for me it will. Now, you're going to be a high elf, right? And I'm going to go with a magic spec because I am in light armor. And I would recommend light armor because let's say you're grinding solo, which I don't recommend. You don't really have many uh, sources of breach. Uh, it primarily comes from you. And even with the lover mundus, as I have here, with 7 light, I only get about 10,000 penetration. Which is fine because if you add on top, like such as, uh, you know, razor caltrips. Right now it's anti cavalry caltrips. I don't know why. I'll change that. But if it's razor caltrips or a source of breach especially as a DK from like Noxious Breath, you get another 5,000 plus penetration. So that's really good. Um, but yeah, so Foss God, Heartland Conqueror, and Mora's Whisper. Mora's Whisper is a big one here uh, because it is one of the newer mythics. And not only does it give you critical chance, but it gives you 15% more experience gain based on monster kills. Uh, it also gives you inspiration, line string and line skill, but that's kind of irrelevant to the point of the build. And of course, it scales off of how many books of the Shallow Doors library you've collected on your character, not your account, on your character. So that's another 15%, right? And you'll notice that I have a missing jewelry slot here. Well, I'll be marrying Kilnardine from the late night Dungeoneers from PC Europe. He's going to come to PC and then grind with me for eight hours a day. So we're going to be marrying each other. I hope you guys send your, you know, wedding gifts in, in the comments down below. Uh, I do take gift cards, <laughs> but yeah, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna get married, and that's another 10% XP gain. Uh, the double event, double, double XP event itself gives 100% more XP, and of course I will have at least 120 Mythic Ethereal Ambrosias to use, and this, this one gives 150% more XP gain. 
And we're going to go a little pay to win here with this build. That's right, pay to win. ESO Plus. If you're an ESO Plus member, or if you still have ESO Plus mer membership, uh, it's going to give you 10% more XP gain. Uh, in addition to the 10% from Ring Amaro and being in a group of two players, being in a group of two players, and there's a reason why I always recommend people to find a grind partner, being in a group of two players, you and your partner, gives 10% more XP gain. Okay, and each body trait is traded uh, training. Each body piece at legendary, all combined, seven pieces, is 77% more XP gain. Just to sum it up, high F 1%, Mythic Ambrosia 150%, Double XP 100%, Moore's Whispers 15%, Ring Amara 10%, ESO Plus 10%, 77% from Training Gear Legendary, Heartland Training Weapons, since it is going to be a total of 18% uh, on, you know, whichever bar really, uh, double that 18 and you get 36%. Finally, the group of two players, 10%. That is a total of gaining 409% more XP. If you have all this, that's a shit ton of XP. Um, and again, if you kind of want like the more in-depth stuff, like why I chose certain skills and stuff like that, which is a little uh, self-explanatory if you just look at these bars, but I'll explain them uh, in the written guide that's linked in the, the video description and the comments below. Uh, but yeah, I'll just quickly go over Burning Talons, Molten Whip. This is kind of debatable, if, especially if you're going to use certain foods. Um, if you're going to use Warning Blade or not, because for that, I would highly recommend probably like Crunchy Spider Skewer. Right now I have buy stat food on for Mashka and Help. Uh, you know, like a Solitude a Salmon dish or whatever. Um, or Mr. Bunny Hash. Uh, you can swap it out for that. Unrelenting Drip. This is really, really important for normal Black Rose Prison. Not a lot of people understand this. How much time Silver Leech and Unrelenting, Unrelenting Drip save you in normal Black Rose Prison. Especially if you're going to do round 1 through 4. For those of you who are wondering, I am not going to be doing the round 1 through 4 grind strat. I'm going to be just resetting uh, arena one round two over and over which means you will need to prep yourself with a shit ton of repair kits and a shit ton of repair uh crown uh, soul gems uh other than that uh, everything else is pretty fine aoe deep breath flawless stormbreaker for the extra weapons spell damage mystic orb flames of oblivion eruption stampede razor caltrips and of course standard of might trait wise on your uh, weapons and stuff training of course jewelry can be too arcane ring of maras do not have a uh, trait, as you can see here. So it only gives you the XP bonus, and that's pretty much it for CP. Let's go over to CP. Binding Ore, Master of Arms, Finding Finesse, Occult Overload, and for Fitness Slottables, Balance Vitality, Celerity, Siphoning Spells, and Fortified. Of course, you can switch this up to your liking. That's pretty much it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this build or how to grind Black Rose Prison. If you don't know how to grind Black Rose Prison, I made a video about it a year ago when I told the world this is the best. This is the best XP grinding spot, like straight up. Uh, if you have a partner, and of course, people were like, "Oh my God, they're gonna nerf it now." Well, they didn't nerf it, and the only reason why I think they didn't nerf normal Black Rose Prison, honestly, is because most people suck at uh, XP grinding in Black Rose Prisons. So they're like, "Oh, whatever." People are just dying in there or just not really grinding uh, efficiently enough. I think I only know like maybe set, uh, a few people who are really good at it. Maybe like about 10 people. So is it really worth nerf nerfing normal Black Rose Prison just for the sake of 10 people? Probably not. So they were like, whatever, probably. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon. And if you want to drop by Twitch stream and watch me grind or just talk to me and ask me anything you want, I will be available on Twitch. See you guys soon.